I'm going to try today uh, to explain you the uh, basic principles of making a mold and uh, making the plaster within 10-15 minutes. So please pay attention and then uh, you will learn something. I put some examples on the right and left uh, during the presentation or maybe afterwards you can look to the models. It's uh, more or less the same as the, uh, uh, the, the thing you have to make in the, the coming months. Uh, in this side we have two models. I open them. I always make models that you can open so you can look inside and when you put them together you can see how the light is coming in the model and reflecting. I also put some uh, pictures on top of it. There's some pictures of uh, how the light is coming in, and this is an interesting way of how you can combine uh, plasma models with uh, maybe Photoshop or something on a computer so you can work them up. It's very interesting. Uh, I have prepared one mold. It's just a very simple one, just to explain what's possible. But, but uh, of course, the way you're going to work with this is in your own way, in your own thinking, so you can make what, what you want. I always work, uh, uh, work with uh, the isolation, PE isolation. It's a hard stuff of isolation. You can get them in different kind of uh, measurements. This is three centimeters, but it's a, a very easy way to work. And you can use it with a foam cutter. I don't know if everybody knows a foam cutter. It's uh, like uh, this uh, very thin uh, wire that's going to be hot, and you can cut it. On en a des machines comme ça à l'école, et on va vous les montrer. Voilà. Uh, I did some homework at home, so I make the pieces already uh, on the, the right measurement, because otherwise it will take too long. I will give this. You can look to it and give it through while I'm so this is just an example how a mold is uh, combined. The one I'm going to make is uh, more or less like I'm giving there now. This is a ground plate. I always work that the... Uh, I'm going to make one of the two, of course, and not just two. This is the ground plate. It's the one where the space is in it. This is the space in my model. It's a very simple space, an entrance and some place where light is coming in. It's more or less the same as you can see here, but here it's very complicated and it's worked out. So we just use the easy way to explain it today. So this is the ground plate, and I made some other pieces you can put around. It's one for here, one for here, and the other are some wider, and you can put them here, and you have like a very simple mold. You can see this. The easiest way to put them together is just use, uh, I think everybody knows this, this is a sort of a, a tape that's uh, made from paper. I think everybody uses it often just to... Tesa. Yes, Tesa, something like that. I use this always because it's very cheap and you can use it que tout very le monde fast. Sinon, après chez vous, un tout petit peu plus. Tous ceux qui sont derrière, vous voyez rien du tout. Vous aussi, vous voyez rien du tout. Donc, venez un peu plus près. Regardez comment il colle le Tesa. You just take uh, one little piece on the, uh, the bottom and you put it together in this way. So now it's sticking together. It's very easy. It depends on uh, the, the, how secure you cut these pieces, how good your mold is, of course. So we go and do it two and thrice. Can you do it Okay. Just put the half on the bottom like this. See, it's very easy. You put it on the table, you take your mold, and you just put it on top of it. Just press a little bit, and then you see they stick together in a very easy way. I think everybody can do that. Sinon, vous avez un problème. Imagine. Ça, je suis pas sûr, André. I repeat that like four times. Every time the same procedure. Just put it here. You see. If you do it at home or here, you can do it a bit slower, but we just have like 10, 15 minutes, so I have to work fast, get it ready in time. Like this. Now you have the mold stick together, but it's not strong enough to pour some uh, plaster in, because when you pour now, it will demolish like this, and that's not the way we want it. So we're going to make it a little bit stronger, by putting little pieces on every corner, on top of it. Just put them good together because every little small gap between it, it's possible that some plaster can escape from the mold. And we don't want that. You're gonna see that I did it uh, last night very fast because I have to make a lot of these because you are with a lot of people and a lot of groups. So they are not very secure on the inside, but it's good for an example. When you make them, you have to be working very easy and very secure because everything you make now in the mold, you will see that in the model. So that's very important to know. 
Ça, vous avez compris. Ok. Now I put them together on top. And eventually, I use always uh, a, a kind of tape like this. It's something you use to package uh, curtain uh, yeah. uh, boxes. And I just put it around it, make it very soft, so that you're sure that all the plaster stays inside and the model is not. Now I need some. Un cutter. Quelqu'un aurait un cutter? Ah, voilà. Le cutter. Okay. Thank you very much. Most of the times I do that like two or three times. You can, if you're not sure, use also these to just finish this a little bit more. That it's maybe in a model like this it's not necessary. If you're going to build models like this, it's really necessary to do that. But how bigger the model is, how stronger the plaster is, and want to push push its way outside. So. So, now we have the same model as uh, going somewhere. It's more or less the same. It's strong. You can see the plaster can push on every direction, and it's okay. I'm going to put it here. Now we're going to make the plaster. You need, for the making plaster, you need two buckets, the same buckets. It doesn't matter where they come from. These are sponsored by the Gamma, but it <laughs> doesn't matter. They have to be the same because it has to take with the weight. And uh, when I'm studying, they learned me a very simple trick uh, to get uh, the right uh, ratio between the plaster and the water. And you have to make a stick. I also draw it on the, on the board here. You have to make a stick, and the combination, the ratio between the plaster and the water is one to one to 1.5. So it means you have to put these uh, little uh, curved things where you can hang a bucket, like this. And you see, when I put it like this, it's not... Uh, it's not okay because this one is longer, so it's like here. But that's because we use less plaster on weight than we use water. The ratio is 1 to 1.5 or more or less 65% uh, water when we look into the plaster. This is a very easy way, then you don't have to uh, need uh, something to weigh it and things like that because it's very simple. Just need a wood stick, three of these ones, and you're ready. To go. I put it on the board so it's easy to uh, mm. just draw it. And Cool. So we start, it's very uh, 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 important to know that always when you mix two, these two together, you always start with the water and you put the plaster within the water. It's not the plaster and putting the water within the plaster, uh, within the plaster, yeah, but the other way around. So we take some water, very good water, in one bucket. In the other one, we put some uh, plaster. This is, I don't know, uh, one from Saint Gobert, but it doesn't matter which one it is. You can get it in every hobby shop or uh, painting shop or things like this. This is really the plaster you need to pour uh, with uh, molds to make models. So it's not the same as the plaster you put against the walls. You can pour it there. So don't buy that because you can throw it away. Okay, now we're gonna check the weight. I uh, write it on on, uh, on the stick, so you will remember it. Gibbs, it's a Dutch word, and the water. And you can try and look, and you see it's too much water and too less plaster. So you. Almost there. This is also an easy way to uh, when you want when you, when you want to pour a model that's very complicated. You just have to explain that maybe. This is a very simple model. 
So you can see the plaster when you're pouring it in here, it can come everywhere, very simple. But when you make models, when this space is more on top of it and the plaster had to get under it, you have to make the plaster very liquid. So the norm, this is the normal uh, ratio for making normal plaster. When you want to make it very liquid, because it's a very complicated mold, you have to put more water in it. So this is more or less, I think, the right ratio. So if you can see, it's almost horizontal. So this is more or less the, the right ratio to use it. When you want to make a, a model with more liquid uh, plaster, you have to put more water in it and it will be something like this. Now you're gonna be a little bit dirty because I always work with my hands. You can do it with a stick, but you can feel if all the little pieces of uh, plaster are uh, get into the water. So what you do is you take the bucket with the water and very slowly you let the plaster go in. Not at once, just piece by piece. And then you wait like one, two minutes, just giving the plaster the time to get all this oxygen getting out and the water getting in. Very important, you see that the plaster is getting in the water very slowly. Once in a while you just push to it. There are all these little bubbles on the round of it, you can see them. And that's the air that is coming out of the plaster and the water that's going in. It's a very important procedure because now the plaster knows this is changing. This takes like one minute, two minutes. If you're very hurry, you can do it faster, but it's always easier to wait just long enough. And then you're gonna need your hands. You have to put it in and you have to squeeze all together. I always use my hands because it's like I said, it's very easy to uh, push these little things that stick together. And then you're sure in the end that all the plaster is uh, used together with the water. You have to take your time because it's very important that all the plaster is coming together with the water. If you're not sure, you just do it like one minute longer. And you feel, and you feel once in a while, you feel these little sticky things. You have to push them together so they are finished. Don't use a mixer or something like that, because it won't work. You think you're working faster, but in the end it will take more time. Now you see the color is like the color of plaster, it's like white, white, yellow a little bit. But you can use like a, a, a sort of, a, how do you call it in English, what they use to, to give color on a, a painting. You can buy it in a, in a painting shop and you, you just have to uh, ask for the, the powder they use to give color to paint. And you can use this into, uh, uh, into this plaster, but just very less. Because if you use too much, you break down the system of the plaster together with water. You can see it in the models I show, they are all like a little bit gray. I used a, a black powder, a little bit, just to make it a little bit grayer. And a little bit, how much is a little bit? A little bit is just like a, a coffee spoon or something like that. Really a little bit. But you have to experiment with that. I, I also learned it by trying. Just put something in it and sometimes it's not working. You have to do it again. You have like uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to use this and then it's, uh, uh, sometimes it's faster, it depends on the temperature in the room. Sometimes you have just like 5-7 seven seconds, 5-7 uh, seven, minutes to use it. After that it's uh, too hard and it will not go into all the little corners. So you have to, when it's finished, you have to use it. Okay. We put the mold in the middle and we just pour it in, just like this. Now this is an easy mold, so it's easy pouring. But when it's a very complicated or difficult mold, it's harder to pour because you have to be sure that it's in all little corners. There's not a trick to be sure. Okay, we'll keep it. 
when you finish with this mold, it's not really necessary. But I can imagine with a complicated, it's necessary. You can do like this with it. It's the same like uh, pouring concrete when they're doing in uh, construction buildings. But they use like a very long stick and it's uh, vibrating. You can do it in the same way, just do small things like this. Now you can see, because we build it very fast, there are some little leaks, you see here. And that's probably because I'm not that secure yesterday evening because it was late. And then you see it coming out. It's not a big problem if this is happening. If it's like this, it's not a big problem. If it's more, you have to start probably over again. I use always something like this just in the end to make it very straight. And you will see it's always like a little bit, little bit bigger and a little bit round. But that's not a real problem. You can do it a couple of times. Just leave it like this. Because in the end, this side will be the most uh, unstructural side, because the other sides will be very smooth. But you can, with a little grounding paper and a little bit water, you can make it very smooth. So it's not a big problem. Just leave it like that. You use things like this, and it has to stick together, because this is a very difficult isolation to work with. You can best use like these uh, uh, wood, um, because it works very well with the uh, PE uh, isolation. Don't use the normal uh, uh, things to stick things together because it will uh, eat. Uh, eat. Yeah, so it's not nice. So just very simple this one. I use the one that dries very fast so you can work on. That's uh, an extra tip to know. Models like this more or less take, let's say, six, seven days a week. But then it's really like complete because after three or four days you're gonna think it's dry, but in the inside it's not really dry, so it takes something longer. But within an hour or two, models like this you can unmold it. You're gonna feel, because it's a chemical process, you're gonna feel that they're gonna start when they're drying, it's gonna be very hot. And that's because it's a chemical process that the water and the plaster are mixing together and making itself strong. Uh, we also pour it sometimes in just a curtain, but you have to pour in very small uh, bits because it's very wet and it has to be strong curtain. But you can use like uh, leather because it has a texture. You can use like uh, rubber, it has texture. You can use uh, even just like a uh, foley like this and you crumble it together. You can use everything, but you have to experiment a bit. Then you know what's possible to use. But if you're in a room and there are a lot of different things, just use everything and try and try. Don't try to make the first model the right model. Just try three, four, five models and look and experiment with materials to see what's interesting and not. Because this is very basic. This is real flat with a hole inside, finished. But there are like impossible, uh, uh, a lot of possibilities to, to use uh, to make a model. A round is, is like you have to cut it with a knife or you have to use like the, the foam cutter and just make it round. It's like in that model, it's a, a round ceiling. So it's not really difficult, but you have to be, uh, you can use the, 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 the foam cutter, good. So you take a knife, yeah, and just cut the tape, like this. Don't turn it around, just keep it in this way, that the top is up on the upside, like this. Just do it very carefully, very easily, like this. Turn it around a bit, and then we do it on this side, just from down to up, like this, just cut it. Be sure everything is cut full. And then you just can open it like this, you see? Open, open. So you can pull it out and just get this also, just piece by piece. Pull it like this. Just be careful because it's very fragile on this moment still because it's like poured an hour ago. Now you can turn it around and you can take this off, like this. And you see this is still inside, but it's too uh, uh, wet still to get this out. You have to wait like one or two days to finish up the, the inner side. Mm -hmm. But now it's good that it's possible to dry on all the other sides, so it can dry very fast. You feel it's very hot and you have to wait for this. And there are two options. If this is very easy, 
you just can pull it, you put your knife in and pull it in one time. But if it's, this is a very complex space inside, you have to like do bit by bit like here. Just get bit by bit out and again, like one or two millimeters from the side, it, you, you leave. And then if everything is outside, you can pull the, the facades, the inner, and you can pull it out. So that's depending on the difficulty of your uh, model. And this you see, this is because my model wasn't that good. Normally it has to be very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs>